welcome to Comic Book Day. Uh, I'm Joe, and I'm showing off all the comics that I bought this week. So let's start with Southern Bastards number 20. This is the final part of Gut Check. Uh, that's the story arc that's been going on right now. And this one, we finally get to see uh, Roberta go up against Coach Boss. Uh, also, you have that crazy archer guy from out in the woods can't remember his name right now, but he's he's shown up to take out Coach Boss himself. And uh, last issue ended with him shooting Roberta in the, in her hand and knocking out her gun. This time, both of them take a lot out of uh, Coach Boss. He shoots him with an arrow, several, several arrows. Uh, and then finally she takes him down. And before, you know, Coach Boss ex expects Roberta to kill him, but... It doesn't exactly go as you might think. This is not the end of this comic by any means. So, but it also very much focuses on the downfall of Coach Boss, or, I don't know, the beginning, the real beginning now of the downfall of him. Uh, all the other people in town, you know, are starting to work on replacing him, both as a football coach and as the head of kind of all the crime in their town. So, I'm always really excited to see a new Southern Bastards comic even though they only come out once or twice a year, pretty much. Uh, I don't know, maybe it'll come out a little more, but I know both these guys, Jason Aaron and Jason Latour, they do a lot of other work on other comics, so hopefully just they come out pretty soon, and it's always as good as it is. This is Batman White Knight, number eight. This is the finale of this miniseries, and it was a good end. Uh, you have kind of a tragic... Uh, death, almost, of Jack Napier as he finally reverts back to the Joker. Um, but with him reverting back to the Joker, he helps take down the Neo-Joker. His That was always the problem I had with this comic. I didn't like where they had it, two different Harley Quinns. Uh, early on, they kind of established that, oh, the Joker was so insane that he didn't even realize when Harley Quinn went away, and then he just kind of picked up another blonde girl, and she started being Harley. I didn't really like that, but it did, was kind of good to have, like, the evil, you know, evil Harley, and then you had the good Harley. Uh, this comic also kind of reveals, you know, how much everyone in Gotham finds out how Jack Napier's been kind of, you know, playing them, and he kind of set up some accidents and took over all these criminals. Uh, and this one kind of is about, you know, it finally comes down to Batman going, talking to Harley about, like, how did all this happen. He reveals to Harley that he knew that she was kind of manipulating him, uh, the Joker knew that Harley was kind of manipulating him this whole time, but he didn't really care. Uh, it kind of has some touching moments between Jack Napier and Harley where they're, like, in love, and they actually are about to get married right as he reverts right back to the Joker, so it's kind of tragic there. Uh, so yeah, this has been a good, weird series. Uh, definitely check it out if you have, like, you know, now it's all out, so you can buy, like, collected versions soon. Uh, so yeah, people should read that. This is The Flash, number 46. Uh, this is a variant cover that I loved a lot. Just Professor Zoom right here. Uh, this is The Road to Flash War, which kind of reveals how uh, Reverse Flash went back in time and got Hunter Zolomon and took him into the future, which we've already seen the Hunter Zolomon's in the future. Uh, he's super mad because when Eobard Thawne got killed by Iris West, I don't know, several months ago now. Uh, so this is kind of revealing how he's been behind the scenes. You also are dealing with Wally West and everything that's going on with him. Uh, his memories are coming back, but it's kind of causing weird problems for him with the f Speed Force. I think that's probably going on in kind of like the Titans comics maybe some too, because I felt like I was kind of left out on what was going on with him. Maybe I just forgot whatever happened at the very end of the last issue, but I'm really excited to see what's going to happen with Flash, uh, the Flash War, I mean, and uh, I don't like Professor Zoom as much as Reverse Flash, but I'm still excited to see this. He is the evil, you know, Wally West main kind of rival. This is Rough Riders number four. Uh, Rough Riders Ride or Die. This is the third Rough Riders series, and this is the final. It seems like, well, it's the final for the original team, definitely. Uh, the very end of the comic kind of sets up that maybe 
Alice Roosevelt, uh, the Theodore Roosevelt's daughter. Maybe she'll kind of set up her own team. Uh, they put out one little special once that revealed that there has been different decades of Rough Riders, most of them led by uh, Alice Roosevelt. So yeah, this was a pretty good conclusion, although I kind of hate to see the original team go away. I really like all them, but it was kind of good at the end to see Houdini and Jack Johnson finally kind of started hanging out, and Jack Johnson got to go meet his wife. The series kind of left Thomas Edison in ruins, which I want to look this up, you know, historically, because at the end of it, his house gets blown up uh, to defeat the main, uh, this evil demon who's come back with, like, a dead person, basically. So I don't know if in real life Thomas Edison's house really burned down, but I'm guessing it probably did because this has, you know, some bit of historical accuracy to it. Uh, I always really love Rough Riders, though, so I hope they do keep it going, at least with a new team. And maybe they'll find a way to bring back some of the old team. It'd be cool to see, like, a new team and the old team kind of team up and everyone could be older, but that'd be cool to see. This is Captain America number 701. Uh, this comic actually came out last week, but I had to wait a week to, uh, I wanted this variant cover and they had to make sure it was okay at the comic book store. This story is taking place in the future. Uh, it follows Steve Rogers' family, and it follows Jackson Rogers, who is a historian in the future, and he's trying to figure out how to save his son using the Super Soldier Serum. Uh, everyone has been given the Super Soldier Serum, basically, in the world. So everyone's like you know, kind of more, they aren't super soldiers, but they're all, like, healthy now, um, but this is, reveals that they're also, like, Kree, um, kind of, like, sleeper cell agents now, and so, you know, someday they'll just be taken over by the Kree and sent out to go fight all their enemies. Uh, it also has these cool little stories about Captain America kind of throughout time, including one that takes place kind of in the 60s, which I thought was cool because it really kind of ignores the fact that, like, Captain America has been around for so long. I mean, lots of comic books now try to act like, you know, like Peter Parker was a teenager in the 80s, even though he was a teenager in the 60s, and, like, real life, that's when those Spider-Man comics came out. But this one kind of just ignores that, in all reality, Captain America probably wouldn't have been thought out in 1968 and then st still been around, you know, during this time. So I like that it kind of ignores the real timeline changes. This is barrier number one, and this is barrier number two. Uh, both these comics came out this week, but actually barrier number one came out for free comic book day. I unfortunately completely forgot about free comic book day this year, so... I bought this, well, first I bought the second one and then realized, oh, the first one's coming out, so I need to buy that one too. This comic is really, really interesting. It's about alien abductions. That's the basic idea. It's following these two people, Libby, who lives in America on this farm. First, in the beginning, she finds a horse, her horse's head uh, completely skinned. Then it also follows Oscar, who's trying to immigrate to America. Well, he's trying to get to America. I don't know really what he's going to do once he gets here. But he, he's he got some journal that kind of is explaining why he's coming here. We don't know what's in the journal. He's coming here from Honduras, and half of this comic is printed in Spanish. Oscar only speaks Spanish. Everyone, you know, in the beginning of the first issue, he's down in Honduras still, so everyone along that... They all speak Spanish, and then in the second issue, after him and Libby have been abducted, you know, he still just speaks Spanish. That's all. He doesn't speak English at all. So, it's kind of fun to go through and read these and translate, uh, you know, with Google Translate. That's what I've been doing to figure out what all the Spanish is saying. I did find out there's an afterword in the first issue, though, where Brian K. Vaughn, who's one of the writers on this, First, he says that you don't need to use Google Translate, because you can kind of pick up what's going on. It's also kind of interesting to think about it from Libby's perspective, where you can't 
understand what Oscar is saying, and neither can she. So you're missing a whole bunch of the story, just like she is missing a whole bunch of the story. Um, but also, what's kind of a problem, I think, with this is that first Brian K. Vaughn wrote it, and then had another writer translate it into Spanish. So every time I'm trying to translate it back into English, you kind of lose a couple of things, because obviously it's either, like, contextually, or there's just not, like, you know, probably, like, different weird sayings and stuff don't translate the same way. Uh, that's usually the things that aren't coming through and translating the right way for this. But I'm really, really excited to see this whole series. It's a five-part series, and in the back of the comic, Brian K. Vaughn says that they aren't planning on reproducing this in, like, a collected trade paperback ever. So these might be the very, you know, only versions of this comic that ever exists. And it, I like how it has this weird kind of, a, I think of it like a calendar, where it opens up and you read it that way. Because of that, it does some cool stuff with the artwork, too. So I'm going to do things a little different this week, and instead of showing off two different comic series, I'm just going to show off these two issues of Barrier, because I really think it's interesting how they use this kind of calendar format to set up their pages. They have these really, you know, now that you're dealing with this, like, longer page, you have these kind of bigger setups, and it works for some really, uh, like, this is such a good big, uh, splash page is what they're called where it's just this one big thing and then they have these really sweet kind of character introdu introductions here you see Liddy here you see that she's down in Texas and then so later on in the issue there's a good sequence where each page is kind of showing what Liddy or Oscar is doing uh, as Oscar is traveling and Liddy is just kind of waiting to see what's going to happen with her farm uh, in the beginning, she's kind of thinking that maybe this is like a cartel trying to use her land and kind of send a message to her to back off and let him do it. But, you know, she realizes by the second issue that, no, maybe it's aliens, actually. I love this where you have, here's Liddy's story and here's Oscar's story, and they're kind of paralleling each other. This is actually one of the funniest scenes, I think, is here you see Oscar and a guy's pulled a gun on him. The next thing... There's Oscar with the gun, and the guy who pulled the gun on him has a black eye now, and is having to row Oscar across some river or ocean or something. And yeah, it has these sweet kind of setups. That's just some stuff from the first issue, um, but at the very end here, it gets really kind of trippy too, and I love this. And they have really good at last pages, and I like how they add the... The co to be continued, and it's printed, you know, both English and Spanish right there together. Um, this this is a series that really like you likes to throw in some random, trippy, bright colors, weird stuff. Here in issue two, uh, this one begins with some really great kind of crazy stuff. I love this picture. And then this, where it kind of is, I don't know if you're supposed to be zooming in or zooming out. I think you're actually supposed to kind of be zooming out from this. But this one kind of doesn't add to, you know, help figure out where you're kind of going, where the panels are taking us. But it's got such weird, crazy imagery. It's got some awesome close-ups of scary, very frightening things in this. Uh... It'll be so cool to see what happens with all this alien abduction story. And, like I said, there's a lot of... I mean, definitely about half the comic is in Spanish. There is, you know, a lot of different times where there's no speaking at all, and it's just kind of these cool action sequences and panels. But I think it's really cool that someone went through and did a comic this way. I mean, it's... I kind of hate always in comics where it's just like, you know, they just, like have a little star and it says like oh this is translated from whatever language they're supposedly speaking I mean it's not as bad as like where movies will do it and they'll say one sentence or two sentences in whatever native language they speak and then we'll just change right away to English even though there's no reason for that so I'm excited to see this comic it's so different from anything else that I've seen and it's got these crazy these are what the aliens I think look like they kind of burst out of these pods here at the end 
And so it'll be really interesting to see what these aliens are doing. Uh, we have no idea why Oscar and Liddy were taken. Liddy has her clothes dissolved by some weird chemical when they get on the alien ship. But Oscar is in a completely separate place and he still has all of his clothes. So, you know, maybe that'll play in somehow. Like, they're doing something different to Liddy and they just happen to pick up Oscar. Uh, here's another weird... I think this is supposed to be the two aliens talking to each other. Uh, but man, these aliens are so weird looking. And I like how they possibly have these weird, um, uh, word bubble, word cloud things. And they're different colored. Oh, also what's good about this series is... That might not be a good way to show that. Uh, it's got a little quote always in the back. You know, it's from the, the comic in here. This is this one translates to, we are dead and we are in hell. Uh, it's always kind of, you know, a very solemn, foreboding kind of quote at the end. And I'm really excited to see what's going to come with this. It's such a unique idea to print it in Spanish and in English. And the artwork on it is really cool. It's got a way different setup than most normal comics. The only problem I'll say is it's a tiny bit bigger than your normal comic. It's actually a little bit thinner too, but that doesn't matter. But because of that, it doesn't fit perfectly into like a bag, you know, the plas the polyphane bags. Um, and I like to store my comics in those, but at least it can fit in there and be taped shut. Um, I have a whole bunch of comics that can't fit into my normal comic boxes and can't be bagged because they're weird sized comics, so at least this one is still manageable. Alright, so that's everything I bought this week. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, thanks everyone who has watched. There hasn't been like a whole lot of views yet, but it seems like pretty consistent views on each episode, so thanks everyone. Uh, go through, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and of course write in the comics, tell me what... <laughs> of course write in the comments, tell me what you're reading, and uh, Tell me what you think of any of this stuff. Tell me if you're going to go through and translate what's going on in Barrier, or if you'd rather just read it and be a little in the dark. Thanks. Bye.